Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. And welcome to Worldwide Wednesday, Sweden edition. Yeah, we're in Sweden <laughs> right now, and we're excited. Last week, we took our first look into Sweden, mm -hmm. and we got to see some beautiful places. And as always, in the comments, you suggested a few other places to look at. And don't fear, we will get yeah, there. Yeah, we're going to look at a lot more, so we have plenty of time to do that. <laughs> we sure do. So today, we're going to take a look at Geography Now, which Sweden. is... Sweden. <laughs> Simple title. <laughs> but before we do that, if you don't mind, please hit the like button. It helps our videos get put out to more people. And consider subscribing to the channel. It's free, easy, but only do it if you want to. So, yeah, Geography Now, Sweden. Yes. <laughs> and last week we had mentioned we were going to be doing some mm. food this week. Yeah. But we are going to get to that. Next we're week. We're just going to hold off just a little that, bit longer. That will be next week. We ran out of time. Um, we do have some uh, Swedish snacks that we've purchased at our international market from Sweden. And um, we'll be doing that next week. We just ran out of time this week. Yeah, and that's my favorite video to do. So we don't want to rush that. No, we don't want to rush that at all. Let's take your time and enjoy it. And if you don't already know, tomorrow is a very special day here on YouTube on the Natasha and Debbie mm -hmm. show. Tune in live if you have an interest. Uh, tomorrow is the 20th anniversary of when we met. That's right. And been together. And uh, we are renewing our vows tomorrow morning, uh, Thursday. That would be uh, 8 a.m. in the UK which I think that makes it 9 a.m. in Sweden, if I'm not mistaken. So hopefully you will join us tomorrow Live. for that. Live. So anyway, today's episode. So this is supposed to teach us, I just kind of looked at some of the chapters, a lot about Sweden. We've done geography now with Australia. Uh -huh. And Norway. 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 And we learned quite a bit of stuff. It's a good, good foundation for us to learn and, and get a, like a, cat, like a mm -hmm. catapult off into a country. And I'm just looking at the chapters, it talks about um, the culture, the population, um, the economy, wildlife, things like that. Food. Sports, a little bit of everything. Yeah, so. it's time to learn about this beautiful country that is Sweden right now. Sweden, I don't have to give much of an introduction. I'm sure you've all heard of this one. We've scaled the treacherous Danish peaks of Mulla. We have it. Stomached the ammonia flavored Icelandic Haukar. We have it. And our wallets were viciously attacked by Norwegian <laughs> prices of anything. But now it's time. Welcome to the final boss of Scandinavia, Sweden. Not for us. Oh, it's That's hot. Final. I'm all hot and sweet right now. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know Bad the jokes. drill. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, kick it. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Noah's back, by the way. Here we are. Yep. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey, everybody. I'm your host, Barbs. You can get a Geography Now t-shirt or Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. Not selling out if it's your brand. Anyway. All right, you guys, this is it. Our last Nordic country. Not but for us. what about? You're a constituent. But what about? You're an unincorporated territory. But what about me? We already did your video. I even went there. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I actually wanted to go to Sweden for this episode, but at the last minute, Sweden was like, dude, we're going to close off our borders to anyone outside the EU. But you know how it goes. The show must go on. And if we can't go to Sweden, we're going to bring Sweden to us and in the best possible way with real Swedish people. Cool. And I mean like real Swedes, not those fifth generation Minnesota Swedes that eat Ludafisk <laughs> once a year. And and so with that, say hi to Jonas and Carolina. Come on in. Woo! Oh, yes, they are. <laughs> I got two Swedes. So you guys are the real deal. Swedish, straight up, right? I uh, I was born in Sweden and lived there for 10 years. And then my mom moved me to the enemy, to Norway. Oh, so you're yeah. half Norwegian. Okay. Yeah. And I'm from Skåne, so we might have some angry people out there claiming I'm Danish, but... Um... It was LA. You guys were the best <laughs> I could find. So uh, anything you want to say to the Swedish subscribers? Nah, I'm excited for you guys to uh, learn more about your country. <laughs> Our country. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, where are you guys from? I'm from Helsingborg. And I'm from Chalefteo. Now, there are many ways you can divide Europe. You know, like you have the Mediterranean. Hey, tomato for sale, tomato. The post iron curtain. <laughs> <laughs> the Balkans. <laughs> but everyone knows the further north you go, things start to get scan delicious and yep. sweet. 
Lots to cover. Let's look at the globe. Sweden lies in the region of Scandinavia in northern Europe and is the largest of all the Scandinavian countries, the fifth largest in Europe and third in the EU. I don't the know country that. is bordered by Norway to the west and north and Finland in the northeast, separated by the Gulf of Bothnia otherwise between them. In this gulf, you can also find Sweden's two largest islands, Öland and Gotland. Otherwise in the south, the only other physical connection they technically have is with Denmark via the partially submerged and partially above ground Öresund Bridge that connects Malmö, mm. the third largest city, to Copenhagen. I'm trying my best with these pronunciations, bear with me. The country's largest city though and capital is Stockholm, located mm -hmm. on the east side of the country, and it actually sits on 14 islands with over 50 bridges at the drainage of Lake Malaren, with over 20 wow. lakes and count- I didn't know all that. I know, I know. The <laughs> island. So that's super cool. I can't wait to take a, a better look at that. A lot here. List streams. This is why it is sometimes referred to as the Venice of the North. The country is divided into 21 counties, each abbreviated by a letter or double letter known as a country code. For the EU statistical system, though, the mm -hmm. counties are grouped into eight riksområden, or national areas, to address things like population data and so forth, but uh -huh. they in themselves do not have any administrative function. Otherwise, if you ask a okay. Swede, they might revert back to the three traditional lands of Sweden Norland, Svealand, and Jotland. Technically, there was a fourth, Österland, which was basically South Finland when it was under Swedish rule, but that term hasn't been used since the 15th century. Anyway, Stockholm is also the central hub of economic activity and transportation. The largest and busiest airport is Stockholm's Arlanda International, which, like so many European international airports, is located super far from the actual city. Mm. It takes a 20-minute express train or 45-minute car drive to downtown. The That's second largest too. airport, Landfeta yeah. International, is located in the second largest city, Jettebori, or Gothenburg, for the misguided English speakers. Jettebori Hi. actually also has the largest shipping port in the country and the largest in all of Scandinavia. Navia, taking in about a third of all Swedish trade activity. It lies on the Kattegat and Skagerrak, the shallow straits that open up Scandinavia to the rest of the world. With other okay. major cities like Oslo and Copenhagen within radius, here about 70% of all industry and commerce through Scandinavia happens. It's a busy spot to say the least. Finally, mm. the country has quite an organized system of roads and rail networks that more or less parallel each other. There are two main north-south highways, the E4 that hugs the entire Bothnia coast, and the okay. E45, the longest road in the country that goes along the mountain mountains inland from Jettebori all the way to the border but with there's Finland some pretty views on that one. Uh, yeah, also just it's say important that. to note that Sweden claims to have the most islands out of any other country in the world at over really? 260,000. In any case Sweden's domain wasn't always confined to these borders. For starters Sweden being Scandinavian obviously have Viking history. If you know anything about Vikings you'll know that they went places. They were literally <laughs> in the Americas 500 years before Christopher Columbus. Yes and I always say mm -hmm. that. I don't know why people still say Christopher Columbus oh, yeah. discovered America. No, he didn't. Yeah. He never even stepped foot on mainland um, um, North America anyway. Right. Um, no, I always say the Vikings did. Mm -hmm. And I'm, pr I'm proud to have some Swedish and, and Denmark ancestry. That's right. We both have some ancestry there. <laughs> or both part Viking. I don't know what that means. Her. <laughs> they couldn't conquer an area. They still left their mark somehow. Even the Hagia Sophia in Turkey has runic inscriptions hidden. Really? It. it was like Viking graffiti. Like uh, Vikings were here. On top of that, in the 1600s, <laughs> Sweden started to become a European powerhouse and like many other countries, took an attempt at settling and colonizing places outside of Europe. At one point, Sweden had fortresses and colonies in the Americas, Africa, mostly in what yep. now is Ghana. Further, which it's yeah. more, within in Sweden, you even have a few micro nations. We don't have time to get into each of them, but uh, they're pretty interesting. One of them was made as a protest by an artist to protect those wooden sculptures. Anyway, the developmental <laughs> structure behind Sweden has a lot of history behind it. Like Visby on Gotland Island, probably the best preserved medieval city in That's Scandinavia. That's beautiful. Yes. The old town Stockholm neighborhood of Gamla Stan was built as a fortress to protect wow. against pirates. Later on, really? one of your kings would actually become a pirate, but that's another story. In fact, the country has 15 UNESCO heritage sites, and actually, here's fellow geography Rebecca to explain a little bit more about the top notable sites of Sweden. Oh, Rebecca, I like to this. Hi everyone, my name's Rebecca and if you're ever in Sweden, here are some of the most notable sites. There are plenty of notable castles, fortresses and cathedrals such as Drottningholm Castle, mm. Grimsholm Castle, Örebro Castle, yes. Visby Town Wall, Uppsala Cathedral and St. Mary's Cathedral. Sweden also wow. has the highest concentration of rune stones in the world, with the most famous one being Rökstjärnet. There's also many historical Viking sites such 
as Birka Viking Village, Trelleborgen, Old Uppsala and Alestena. If you're looking for more excitement, check out the theme parks Liseberg, Gröna Lund and Skara Sommarland. Notable museums in Sweden are the Vasa Museum, ABBA Museum, Fotografiska yes! and the Museum Sorry. of Natural History. In Stockholm you can find the newly renamed Avicii Arena. It also acts as the sun in the largest scale model of our solar system. That's cool. Thank you and That's I awesome. hope you come to visit Sweden someday. All those buildings were amazing. Up. Speaking of Swedish places, like other Nordic countries, we have Allemansrätten, which is the legal right to roam anywhere in nature. Have you guys ever taken advantage of that other men in the strap in thing? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, you just like pick berries and like, hey, hey. hey. Yeah, um, I mean, m most places are owned by the country, so you're allowed to be there. Can you just like walk in someone's backyard and be like, hey? No. Alamen and Straten? <laughs> no, it has to be <laughs> public not. land. Well, speaking of roaming in nature, there's lots to explore in Sweden, which brings us to... <laughs> Now, in the Nordics, each country kind of has their own trademark physical trait. You know, Norway has the mountains and fjords. Denmark has the flat grassy farms. Finland is the land of lakes. And huh? Iceland is basically just one big volcano. And then you get to Sweden and it's like a little bit of everything. Yes, wow. there's even a small sand volcano in Simisramn. <laughs> <laughs> Sweden lies on the Scandinavian peninsula of Northern Europe, shared with Norway on the east side of the Scandinavian mountain chain that separates them. Here you can also find the tallest peak, Kepnekaise, in the far north. This means that Sweden gets most of its river runoff from the mountains that mostly flow down okay. into the Gulf of Bothnia, and the longest river shared with Finland being the Torne or Tornio River. The longest river fully within Sweden though being the Dolelvin River. Amongst these rivers is an abundance of lakes and ponds peppering the flatter hilly valleys below, the largest of these lakes being Vernen and Vettern in the south. The reason Sweden has so many of these pockety lake zones and eroded rivets is because they sit on a post-glacial rebound zone. Basically during the ice age all this land was crushed by heavy ice, but after the ice melt, like a sponge, Sweden started to slowly spring back up again. This means every year Sweden recovers on average about four millimeters of land from the sea, in some oh, places wow. even more. This is why you might see extended piers from old homes that once used to be situated on the shore. The country has huh. four general climate zones, the oceanic zone in the south by the Baltic okay. Sea, this is also where most of the agriculture is situated, the continental zone is in the middle part of the country, and finally the subarctic in the north just above that. These areas have the highest forest concentration in the country. Oh, also wow. the peaks of the mountains are classified as tundra. The top 15% of Sweden lies just north of the Arctic Circle where the coldest temperatures and highest snowfall happens. Otherwise in the south, they might not even get any snow at all in the winter. Yeah. Just cold, depressing rain. Numbers fluctuate depending on which source you study, but somewhere around or above 60% of the country is forested, making it the second nice. most forested country in Europe after Finland. Really? It's also important to note that Sweden has April weather, or April weather, in which, uh, well, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the sun is finally out after six months of darkness. So clothes come off. Mm -hmm. We sit in the sun. Oh, whenever you see a sweet too, expect this facing the sun, eyes closed, and then all of a sudden a storm hits, or snow comes, or... Out of nowhere. Yeah. Huh. yeah the interesting like thing, April. though, is that Sweden in the past was kind of not much like what they are today. In fact, at the beginning of the 20th century, much of Scandinavia was struggling with widespread poverty. However, much like Germany's Wirtschaftswunderft, they had the Rekord Orem, in which Sweden's economy bursted with now industries and innovation. And today you have the largest economy and most powerful nation in Northern Europe. To explain a little bit more on the way Sweden takes what it has and flourishes, here's Noah! He's back! Well, here we are. Once again, let's get to it. Despite having lush green lands, only about 7% of the country is arable. Therefore, agriculture isn't exactly their main focus. Okay. Today, much of Sweden's open market economy is heavily based on exports, especially in the timber and mining sectors. The largest mm -hmm. mine in Kiruna is actually so large they are currently in the process of moving the town and residents to make more mines. Wait, this really? is how wow. Sweden in the 21st century became the world's sixth largest iron ore exporter and okay. third largest stainless steel exporter. And of course, lumber. The Swedes love trees so much that a long time ago during famine times, they would put crushed tree bark into their rye bread. What? Which was oh, actually wow. good because the bark had lots of minerals and fiber. Go figure. The lumber. Our ancestors were badass. Heck yeah. What are you eating? Some tree bark in my bread? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of cool. This video is fascinating already. I know, there's so much information. Yeah, here. I'm just sitting here like sponging it up. Like, this is so yep. freaking cool. I'm coming from a place of zero knowledge on Sweden, which is sad, mm -hmm. but that's why we do these Worldwide Wednesday videos. That's right, so and, we can um, learn more. Yeah, because it's it's so neat. Please join our Facebook page if you haven't already. We'd love to get to talk to people from Sweden. Yes. And uh, I'm going to say something that might make you mad, and I'm not trying to, but we really like IKEA. 
Yes, we, we do. do a lot of Ikea stuff. <laughs> more shelves behind us. Ikea. <laughs> Love Ikea. <laughs> I know there's more to your country, hence the watching yes. this video, but this is really interesting. Lumber industry plays a huge role in their world-renowned furniture commerce. We've all heard of Ikea having over 450 stores in about 60 countries. Ikea. They actually studied that in design school. Is that but true, Noah? That is true. Not that I do it, but here we are. You might be hmm. familiar with other Swedish companies like Electrolux, Ericsson, H&M, Saab, Scania. <gasps> Wait, I forgot that H&M was That's Swedish. That's right, you love H&M. That's my favorite store to get my clothes, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And the one that's on the screen now. Spotify is my favorite <laughs> app of all time. I'm freaking out. <laughs> I've always said if I, I could only have one app on my phone, like forget all of the, even mm -hmm. YouTube, buy YouTube. Spotify. I yep. didn't know it was Swedish. She has always said that. Makes sense. H&M and Spotify. Yeah. I did not know H&M. I knew H&M was European. Right. Well, mm. technically Scandinavian now. But, but not specifically Swedish. And it was, I had no idea yeah. it was Swedish. Almost everything I own is from H&M. Yeah. And then unfortunately they closed the store that was super close to us. Yeah. But there's still one in the area. Yeah, there's still one. But, um. Men's size small, if anyone wants to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love H&M and I love Spotify. Uh -huh. oh, well, this is cool. I know, you're so I Swedish. wonder if that's all that ancestors back from the mm -hmm. past going. It's calling to you. I'm just saying. You might be familiar with other Swedish companies like Electrolux, Ericsson, H&M, Saab, Scania, Spotify, and of course the largest domestic company and only one on <laughs> She loves Volvo. <laughs> She always wanted to own a Volvo. I have a Subaru because I couldn't <laughs> afford the Volvo I wanted. Are you freaking kidding me? It's calling you. Sweden. On the Fortune 500 list, Volvo. Great cars, I might say. And I didn't that, know that. Is, uh, that is that is that. Until we meet again. Thank you, Noah. Now, going off of business talk, domestically, Sweden does have a pretty complex system when it comes to taxes that plays into their fiscal structure. As of 2021, their individual tax rates range from about 32% to 52% based on income bracket margins. And that's not even including other factors like corporate value added taxes, which can be up to 25%. When you add them, you get the second highest total tax revenue behind Denmark as a share of its country's income. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, you guys kind of have high taxes. Well, we also have healthcare. <laughs> And good schools. And good and roads. And we get free food roads. To the <laughs> <laughs> roads? In any case, another interesting thing about Sweden is its wildlife. And with that, here's Gary Harlow. Yeah, I know explain. nothing about this. Hmm. Guess who's back? As a Nordic country, Sweden is obviously a place full of cold climate animals. In fact, they have the third highest number of their national animal, the moose, or the Eurasian elk, after Russia and Canada. There's so many moose that they actually have to hunt around 100,000 every wow. year to maintain Whoa. population control. Killing your national animal because there's too many? Go Sweden! <laughs> there are 30 <laughs> national parks and nature protection oh, zones, I see and the most famous being in the North Lapland area where reindeer, yeah, we know that one. socks, grey owls, and brown bears can be spotted roaming freely. Fun fact, reindeer have climate adapted feet in the summer. Their spongy foot pads are more exposed, which help with traction. But in yeah. winter, the pads shrink and the hoof is exposed, which helps cut into the ice when moving. Finally, no Sweden is one of the few no. places in the world with a real taxidermized whale. The what? mouth used to be open for visitors to walk into, but it was closed off to the public because a couple was caught having sex in it. Oh, Speaking come on! Why'd they have to ruin it? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's horrible. That's hilarious. <laughs> Where'd you have sex? In a whale? In a whale. Definitely mouth. they have a story no one else can tell. Uh, they do. Especially if And now like, no one else can walk in there. Well, I wouldn't want to go in there now. <laughs> but don't. um <laughs> Hey, where did where, <laughs> Mom and Dad said I was conceived in a whale? <laughs> True story. You were I conceived you in a whale. You better behave yourself. <laughs> I don't know. I've got nowhere to go with this because I'm too surprised by this one. Oh, yeah, that was uh, interesting. <laughs> Babies, I made one myself. Here's a photo of my daughter. She's beautiful. 
Thank you, Gary. Yeah, I remember the first meal I had in Sweden was reindeer meatballs. You guys love your reindeer. What's your favorite dishes in Sweden? It probably is reindeer meatballs. <laughs> yeah. I would say salmon. Grilled in the summer, oven baked in the winter. Oh yeah, and you guys know fika, right? Yeah, fika. It's funny because coffee was actually banned from Sweden like five times in the 1700s. What? That's another story. Wow. To explain a little bit more about fika and the food, here's Johan and Rikard. All right, guys, well, this is uh, fika. And to explain, here is Johan. So in Sweden, fika is a huge tradition. It's something you do daily. It's a part of a workday break Never where you kind of like gather, you sit down and you have coffee. Historically, mm -hmm. it's been that seven types of cookies minimum plus cinnamon rolls and cardamom rolls and um, then pastries such as princess cakes and other things every day but go ahead and say what i'm thinking too. I'm down for learning more exactly. about this. And I, let's I have think a we need to make this a household let's tradition. Seven types of cookies. Yeah, and more. Sounds lovely. I'm down. Not necessarily this many sorts. I oh, wanted to give you a cross section of what it could be. So, and then the most famous on the bottom would be the princess cake. So if I'm going to try some, I have to have some marzipan. So many layers. I know. Wow. And Hello there. My name is Dick and I'm here to talk about some of the foods. We have kroppkakor or palt, depending on if you are from the north or the south. Interesting. Sil, or as you will call it, herring. We have reindeer, pea soup, cauliflower soup, like soup cauliflower. stemming, or sour herring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that stuff. Uh -uh. Nope. I was I was going to do it. I was going to buy it. Mm, and nope, then nope. I read online that it, it said, like, I know a lot of people done in the challenge on YouTube and stuff. I almost bought it. Mm -hmm. She was like, Debbie was like, I'll kill you. <laughs> No, I will leave. <laughs> yep. Plus, I read that it's like the smell is like a rotten corpse, and I'm like, I will throw up too. I was like, that'll be a boring food tasting because I won't even be here. You'll just walk out. <laughs> <laughs> Reindeer, pea soup, cauliflower soup, surströmming or sour herring, but eat at your own risk. All of these foods can be eaten at the traditional smurgus board or smur smurgus board. That basically. is a Swedish it's word, Swedish isn't it? Buffet. Yeah, I guess it we is. We also have Kallis or Charles caviar. It's a Swedish style of smoked cod roe, not that super expensive. And of course we have Knäckebrö! And the traditional national dish of Sweden, Swedish tacos. Over to some tacos from Sweden. We have Akvavit or flavored caraway liquor. Julmust and Christmas and Poskmusk must on Easter, uh, glug. We have glug. And of course, my. And we can get that, but she doesn't want to try it. <laughs> Should we try it? Let us know. Yeah, let us know and we'll run out and get that real quick. Debbie's like, I don't want to try it. <laughs> we, I mean, if you want us to try it, we will try it. And if we don't try it for the next video, we'll, we'll try it at some point. Yes. Because we can get it. My personal favorite, punch. It's made by the mixing of spirits like Arak brandy or rum with Arak tea with some sugar and water. Very sweet, very strong, and very nice. Thank you, Johan, and Oh yeah, you guys also have something about like the alcohol in Sweden. Can you guys explain what is that? Mm, it's called the Systembolaget, which is like the Swedish system of selling heavily regulated alcohol at state-owned stores at set prices. So you, have, you can be 18 and go to a bar to get liquor, but you can't buy it at a store no. until you're 20. Correct. That's weird. Logic, you know? Logic, yeah. The way it goes is that Norwegian people go to Sweden to buy alcohol, Swedish people go to Denmark to buy alcohol, and Danish people go to Germany to buy alcohol. You guys all have a system. Really? Yeah, a system for cheap alcohol. So there's probably a bunch of 16-year-olds taking a ferry over to Denmark. What? The ferry itself is a party. Yes. I've been on that ferry. <laughs> I've been on that ferry with my mom between Helsingborg and Helsingborg. Oh, and a funny story, I was told uh, when potatoes were introduced to Sweden, it was kind of like this. What are these things? <laughs> well, obviously, liquor. And that's how Aquavit was born, supposedly. Oh, what's that thing about candy on Saturdays? Explain, Carolina. Uh, Lördagsgodis. You get to eat candy on Saturdays. So when we were kids, we got a little amount of money. We got to run through the store and pick our favorite candy. It's I'll amazing. be there in Saturday. In the world. I mean, yes, good ingredients. When you come here, pretty much half the ingredients of American candy is illegal in Sweden. So. <laughs> yeah, it's illegal yeah, most we places. Do that. Well, on that note, we've talked a lot about some of your small little traditions. Let's explain a little bit more in... I asked Jagger Peep Johan to explain Swedish people and what they're like, and he described it something like this. A Swedish person is pretty reserved. They will definitely help you, but probably won't take the immediate initiative to help you. The way I see it, it's kind of like, Oh no, I hope I don't fall. Oh, I'm falling. Oh, and I dropped my wallet. And I got the results of the test back. Mm -hmm. I definitely have breast cancer. Can help me or? Oh, I'm sorry. You're not supposed That's to help That's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 So what are some other kind of taboos? Oh, did you need something? What do you think? I guess uh, when you get on the bus, if there is another available seat and you go sit next to someone, don't do that. 
No. Just don't. And don't have too much eye contact in general. Preferably none. Explain, what is uh, Logo Mignon We love eye contact It's a law America. that basically tells you that don't think you're better than anyone. It's like, don't, <laughs> Wait, don't. tell people that you got good grades. Just get them and move on. But still, you know, kind like of that. let it's, them see it on Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> definitely based on status. Logum is this word that does not Logum. exist in English. And it basically means not too much, not too little, just the perfect amount. I would say that a Swedish person is generally intelligent. Is that full of myself saying that? Nah, it's just a result of uh, our educational system. <laughs> That's right. But part of your culture, uh, Yantalon, you're not allowed to do that, right? Well, we're not allowed to brag, <laughs> no, but now we're in America, so... Um... Sweden has a population of about 10.25 million and has one of the oldest populations in the world at about 41 years of age on Told average. Right now. About 75% of the country claims to be ethnically Swedish, and this is where things get a little complicated. For the okay. remaining 25%, the Swedish government doesn't have any official statistical data on foreign background, what? but what we do know is that of these people, about 2 million of them were born abroad, and about 600,000 were born in Sweden as second generation with foreign parents. We also know that as of 2020, okay. due to the refugee crisis, the largest immigrant communities had origins mostly from Syria and Iraq, which surpassed Finland and Poland in the 21st century for the largest foreign-born communities. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about the refugee thing later, but in the meantime... Sweden uses the Swedish krona as its currency. And we use the type C and F plug outlets, and we drive on the right side of the road. Yes. But we used to drive on the left side until September 3rd, 1967. <laughs> when the Hög Trafiks was instituted. And it was a crazy time. People were all confused. And I bet. Oh, I can't imagine. In Sweden, the official language is shocker Swedish. But the funny thing is, even though Swedish originated and has pretty much always been spoken natively in Sweden, Swedish actually only became official in the country in 2009. What? Yeah. Yeah, they kept really? kind of arguing about it. It was like... No, it might be seen as more difficult for international issues. It might be seen as discriminatory, maybe, for those who don't speak Swedish. God! So let's break this down. The country is called Sweden. <laughs> what the f*** do you think people should speak in Sweden? And that's how Swedish became the official language of Sweden. We've explained this before, but the three Scandinavian countries can all more or less understand each yep. other. If you learn one, you can pretty much kind of communicate with the others. It's just, you know, when they hear Danish, it's like, Oh, hey, Denmark. That's <laughs> me. And the interesting thing is that the Swedish language has pitches. Here's geography Marcus to explain a little bit more. So, pitches? yeah, Swedish is a very hard language to learn. We also have a pitch dialect. Some words look and are uh, pronounced exactly the same but have different meanings so the well, we have that plan uh, it can mean a plan like having a great plan it can also mean a uh, pitch like a football pitch football's plan banan uh, which means banana but if you pronounce it banan it means the track thank you marcus okay. it's not confusing at all. on top of that there are also five protected languages in sweden finnish menkal sami romani and yiddish also, Sweden has a lot of regional accents. Yiddish? If she spoke her huh. native language right now, or... <laughs> you don't native, even say dialect, you say native, language. <laughs> native dialect, I wouldn't understand a word. Say the most difficult uh, southern Swedish thing you can say. Okay, this is not my accent, okay? Disclaimer. <laughs> it is easy but difficult to drive a roller coaster? Wheelbarrow, but that was really good. Right? Yeah. yeah. All right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. You thought wheelbarrow was roller coaster. Whoa! <laughs> in any case, Christianity was introduced in the 9th century. Today, most Swedes, regardless of their level of religious devotion or lack thereof, are at least registered with the Swedish Lutheran okay. Church. And like the Danes and Norwegians, they have their confirmation ceremonies at age 14 or 15. In old times, ancient Swedes and the Norse people follow the Asatru religion. You know, where Thor, Odin, Loki, oh. all of them are from. Otherwise, Sweden is a constitutional monarchy. <laughs> Although they are mostly seen as just figurehead celebrities with almost no actual legislative power. And today, the mm -hmm. royal family is actually French descended. For what it's worth, being the largest of the Scandinavian countries, Sweden has a lot on its plate. In general, most people would say that the system works. Yes, we do have one of the highest life expectancies in the world wow. at over 82 years. People get paid to go to schools they are accepted in. Healthcare is free for people under 18. Dental is free for anyone under
under 23. Otherwise, there are price caps for medical and pharmaceutical services. What happens when you're over 18, though? However, for the population, there mm -hmm. is a bit of a shortage in medical facilities, and like most state subsidized healthcare systems, wait times can be an issue yeah. sometimes, and they follow the 0 30 90 90 rule. This rule states that a person cannot wait more than 90 days to see a specialist and 90 days after diagnosis to receive surgery unless it is deemed an emergency. This means that the worst case scenario potentially, it could take almost half a year to get treated. This is one reason why one out of 10 Swedes actually prefer private insurance, which was, you know, made available in 2010 rather than relying on universal healthcare system. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we aren't going to fully sugarcoat this episode. Everyone knows that Sweden has seen quite a few drastic changes in the past decade or so. During the 2014-15 refugee crisis, Sweden saw a wave of <coughs> asylum seekers, mostly from Syria and Iraq. Obviously, this unexpected influx in such a short time, you know, barely allowing the new immigrants time to integrate, kind of played out in many ways that you know, made international news. Now, this is where the narrative kind of steps on thin ice because you want to be seen as compassionate, but you also can't avoid the fact that statistically problems that quiet Sweden had never really seen before obviously kind of started to arise. We've yep. seen the news features, riots, multiple cities, crime rising, but at the same time, you also want to be seen as compassionate, but without sidestepping the issues. So right. the question was, how? Well, it's not an easy question to answer. So like, I don't know, what do you guys think of that whole situation of the drama? You can see it as either win-win or lose-lose in many ways, because if you're completely against taking in immigrants, you're basically considered a racist. And uh, if you're trying to turn a blind eye to the fact that, you know, crime has risen, a lot the last years, then that's not great either. So yeah. I think this is a fairly new problem and, and it takes some time to really figure it out. It's difficult. And uh -huh. kind of, yeah, kind of a discussion of how to help people, you know, integrate into the society in general. Swedish and society. I think integration is keyword. You know, half the people are gonna argue for all the benefits of opening our country up and helping people, and those are huge as well. Yeah. See, this is kind of part of the complication of Sweden. There's always like a dichotomy of ethics and consequences within their story. Uh -huh. For example, mm -hmm. they've been neutral, or at least on paper, for 200 years, yet that neutrality has always kind of been tested throughout the time. In in World War One, our choice not to intervene pretty much costed us the chance to integrate the Åland Islands. And in World mm. War Two, Sweden took like almost all of Denmark's Jewish refugees. However, they did trade with Nazi Germany and let them use the railroad. But it's like, what other choice did they have uh, when they just witnessed and saw Denmark getting demolished and attacked and occupied in like six hours? It's like, do you stay neutral yet technically cooperate or fight back with no chance and lose everything? So many mm. heavy choices with no simple answers. Okay, I didn't realize uh, any of that stuff. Um, wow. That is is hardcore. Yeah. I mean, and it's so easy for people to sit here, like even us as reactors, to sit here and say, oh, well, this, and, and you should have, and yeah. we're not going to judge you for this. Like, we can't possibly. Yeah. I mean, if you're not there in the time and, and experiencing it firsthand. Even if you are there. I mean, it's easy to sit back and, and look at things that happened in the past and say, oh, you should have done it this way well, or that way. But we're not here to do that. But even, even with this, I don't think it's easy to sit back and say this or that. No. Because what they're saying, right. it's no. There is, like he said earlier, this is complicated and it's one way or it's the other way or it's neither of anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it. yeah, that's complicated. I'm not going to have a opinion. I can't. Um, even the higher ups in the government making these choices probably really struggle and whatever. But, Definitely. You know, didn't know. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot on a country and the people. It so. sure is. Wow. Well, that was fantastic and uplifting. Anyways, <laughs> we must move on. One thing Sweden definitely does actually feel uplifted by would be their heavy, our heavy, involvement in sports. And with that, uh, Art usually fills in for the sports part, but uh, again, he's still on vacation with his family, so I don't know. Uh, Noah, why don't you fill in? All right, Noah, oh, you, gotta, you okay, gotta be Art okay. this time. He's <gasps> gone, so, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, you missed the do, and... You go to. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Sorry, but sports in Sweden. Fun fact they actually won a half medal at the 1900 Olympics, technically. They teamed up with Denmark in the tug of war event. Yes, there actually used to be a tug of war event in the Olympics, which does sound pretty cool. Why would why would you get rid of that? I go to the Olympics to do tug of war. That'd be pretty awesome. You could just be your own team, team Noah. <laughs> there are two sports that kind of originated in Sweden, brandball and floorball. Brandball is kind of like baseball and floorball is basically like hockey. Never heard of either. Floor. No. The thing about Sweden is that each of their neighbors is kind of like their biggest rivals in a certain sport. And of Makes course, sense. we can't mention football without mentioning their biggest player, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But depending on who you ask, many people might say that ice hockey is a national sport. In 2006, mm -hmm. they became the first and so far only team to win both tournaments in the same calendar year, Olympics nice. and World Championships. They're That's part of the cool. big six that are considered the best ice hockey teams in the world, including Canada, Czechia, Finland, Russia, and the United States. Uh, that's the sports parts. 
Thank you, Noah. So much culture in Sweden. Actually, if you want to learn more about it, just read uh, The Adventures of Niels. He rides a goose around Sweden and learns some life lessons along the way or something. With that, here's Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. Culture Stuff. Hey guys, I'm back. Woo! In Sweden, you'll find that every region has its unique identity. For example, the Sami people of Lapland in the north, they have their reindeer herding, tents, and colt or yakti clothing. If you go to the south in Skona, though, you'll find a radically different culture of glass blowing and silversmithing, stuff like that. Of course, we don't have time to dive into all the regions, but one thing you'll realize is that they all have a traditional costume or folkdrichter. One thing you will see all over Sweden is a typical redwood farmhouse. They also have the Dalahes a wooden horse usually painted red with patterns. And speaking of iconic animals, Swedes actually like love Donald Duck, even more than Mickey Mouse. And every year during Christmas, they show Donald Duck and his friends really? wish you a Merry Christmas know. on the TV. Sweden also has many notable individuals in the arts and literature department. And probably the most critically well-known is Anders Zorns, who is commissioned to paint numerous high-profile figures. Swedes are known for their crime fiction drama. Wait, wait, wait. Numerous high President Taft. Yeah. He's an Ohioan, where we live. That's pretty cool. That's pretty that cool. That is. That's a really cool. good picture. So. Profile figures. Swedes are known for their crime fiction, drama, and literature. Ooh. They love the complex, moody scenarios. Many people attribute this guy, I'm not even going to try and say his name, as the founder you. of modern Scandinavian crime fiction. But the number one best selling Swedish author of all time is actually Astrid Lindgren. You've probably Ooh. heard of her Pippi Longstock oh, really? series. Oh, really? And it. speaking of consumable media, if you want to learn about culture, history, and geography through film, check out Filmography Now, where we talk about people like Ingmar Berman, who is a huge influential person in the film industry, and he was from Sweden. Finally, Sweden is known for having a ton of inventions and discoveries, such as nicotine gum, the pacemaker, the three-point seatbelt, GPS, the ultrasound, dynamite, and the Celsius temperature scale. And four elements on the periodic table were named after the town... Bitterby. Echterberg. <laughs> I give up, guys. She's real. And, sounds. and one thing you should give up on is Keith and his music segment. Take it away, Keith. Wow, so we're finally talking about this country that I have like I'm totally lost in my key last week. any sort of bias towards. Oh, wait, hold on. I think I'm forgetting something. Whee! I hope everybody recognizes my favorite Swedish band right here. Let's talk about Sweden, shall we? Technically, Sweden doesn't have a national <coughs> anthem. So they have really? this one song, it's called Du Gama Du Fria. I guess it's the de facto anthem, but not the official one. There's mm. tons of really great Swedish folk songs accompanied by the Swedish nickel harp. Kind of looks like a keyboard mixed with like a violin. Who cool. likes Strandberg guitars? I do. Just so many great guitar players. Per Nelson, greatest guitar player, I think, out of Sweden. Um, there's also English Ingve Malmsteen, Ola Ogland, Michael Ackerfeld. I don't understand why Scandinavia has produced some of the world's greatest guitar players. Anyways, Sweden has also a very pop-centric side. Who doesn't know ABBA? I want to be a dancing queen. ABBA won in 1974 <laughs> for the Eurovision contest. Also, mm -hmm. now ABBA's actually going to be making a new album after doing 40 years of basically nothing. Since then, Sweden <clears throat> has been kind of the pioneers of like electro pop and dance music. More well-known artists might be like mm -hmm. Avicii, the Carnigans, Swedish House Mafia, Roxette. Funny thing is- Roxette was Swedish? And you know, the, the, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know her name, but she passed away recently. Oh, okay. I always loved them in the 80s and early 90s. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they were Swedish. I, I was always a fan of ABBA, so. Well, yeah, ABBA's awesome, right? Duh. Everyone's a fan of ABBA, but. Duh. Everyone loves ABBA. <laughs> huh. And the rocks that was Swedish. American pop songs were written by Swedes. Max Martin has hundreds of songs. Before I go, some of the bands that I really do enjoy are Opeth, Mashuga, Pain of Salvation, Sabaton, uh, there's Beardfish. I wish I could name them Not all. Not my type Anyways, of music, sorry. you guys have a great one. Love y'all. Thank you, Keith. And That's weird. Like, uh, suggestions <laughs> for Swedish music. Robin. She has a, she's a great musician. Benjamin Ingrosso is killing it. Well, uh, oh, and, uh, speaking of which, Carolina is a musician and uh, an artist, and uh, you can follow her Spotify at this link right here. No. <laughs> well, I will promote it. I will promote your Spotify. <laughs> Don't be all Logum or Yantalo and whatever that is on me. You got to promote yourself. This is America. So far, <laughs> Swedish songs, one English one. You want to promote anything? You have a website? Anything? No. You were in a Norwegian. <laughs> If you'd like to go ahead and subscribe to the Natasha and Debbie show, now would be a great time. We're going to go ahead and promote ourselves. We're also on Facebook. And it's free to subscribe. <laughs>
Hit the like button too, thank you. Movie and it got an Emmy Award. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, your music has touched the world in so many ways. And another way Sweden has made its name across the world is by interacting with it. So let's move on to the friend zone. Well, I, like, I like this part. This is interesting. Now, Sweden has an interesting way of dealing with the rest of the world. They kind of have a hands-off, unless really necessary, approach to international conflict. Mm -hmm. For one, their security doctrine states that they have a nonpartisan stance in regards to military alliances. However, it permits cooperation <laughs> with threats against peace security with their military. Yes, Sweden has a military. Nonetheless, they joined oh. the EU in 1995, which some criticized as being against neutrality, but Sweden decided to see it as an extension of economic activity that had already been going on with the EU. Mm -hmm. Right. They also hold the right to not participate in EU defense. Today, they have 79 embassies abroad on all inhabited continents. In Asia, Iraq actually has had relations way before conflict years, dating back to the 30s when members of the royal family visited Baghdad to see King Ghazi of Iraq. In the 80s, Swedish companies opened up in Iraq, trade was developing well for a while, and after conflict years, many Iraqis chose Sweden as their destination as refugees. The USA and Canada have always been close, as the US has the largest Swedish diaspora community at over 4 million people most heavily concentrated in yeah. Minnesota, Canada having just about half a million with a huge community in Manitoba. Between 1820 to 1930, about 1 1.3 million Swedes immigrated to the Americas, which was at that time about one third wow. of the entire country. That's and today, huge. these nations not only had a close historical bond, but in almost every diplomatic measure aside from military conflict, they've cooperated. Bringing it closer to home, Sweden is actually one of the top donors of Moldova in regards to aid and development. They set a strategy of cooperation in 2007, which gives 11 million euros dedicated to good governance economy and rural development now we go even closer to the inner circle the nordics every single one of these five nations and their territories has an opinion about sweden and the gossip is heavy finland is of course yeah. really close as for about 600 years they were actually a part of sweden and today Finns mm -hmm. are one of the largest non-swedish communities with a protected language and pockets throughout the country for iceland it's like eh we're cool with them nothing against them they talk like our ancient norse ancestors but otherwise they're totally our distant cousins then we get to the last two, Denmark and Norway. Now here's the thing, each one kind of has a small historical gripe with Sweden. Denmark, as you know, has had more wars with Sweden than any two nations on earth, constantly fighting over influence for Northern Europe. Norway was kind of pissed that Sweden's neutrality prevented them from intervening in war times when they thought the Swedish were like really close and Norway was even part of Sweden. This was especially evident in World War II. It okay. was like the moment of tension. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, you cannot separate the Scandinavian trio. They no, just they get each other too well. They share too much. They have the same general Scandinavian Siblings. minds. They have that Viking mm -hmm. blood. They are truly people of the North. After the insults have been hurled, they will probably say, okay, yeah, yeah, we love each other. Denmark <laughs> and Sweden, though, will probably first hug Norway before hugging each other. But otherwise, yeah, inseparable trio. All right. And in conclusion, you are the Swedes. I'm going to step out, hold the flag in the background while you speak freely from the heart. I want to say in conclusion, Sweden is a beautiful country with beautiful nature, beautiful architecture, if we haven't mm -hmm. mentioned that just yet. Yeah, and like we mentioned, if you meet a Swedish person, he or she might be a little reprehend, like a little bit, hmm, I'm not sure about you, but lead on with a smile and some love and you'll get the exact same back, I promise you. Well, that was a lot of fun, no. a lot of information. It um, definitely was. Easy to follow. Um, my gosh, there's so much here. Uh, wow. Yeah, they packed so much into that episode. They really did. It's hard to like sum it all up. Um, I can, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get a summarization, but uh, I learned a lot. Um, if you feel like they got anything maybe a little wrong, it can happen. It can. Um, or maybe they should have covered some things. Let us know, leave mm -hmm. us a comment. And again, if you're from Sweden, please say hi. Let us know where in Sweden. Uh, that was so cool though. Like I. I'm just floored by so much of the information. And, and because of last week's video, we did get to see some of that beautiful architecture mm -hmm. that she mentioned us at the end there. I can't wait to see more of it. And I want to see more of the, the architecture, the design, and learn more about the culture and, and the people that... The culture, the people, yes. yes. The wildlife. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely want to see more there. And the nature preserves and different parks and things like that that you have. But uh, I'm excited about trying out the snacks next week. Oh, yeah. That's, now, that's how we really get to know you is by your food. Absolutely. Now, we don't have a ton of stuff, but we have a few things, and I saw one or two of them in this episode, mm -hmm. so I'm excited about that. If you guys like this episode and you're enjoying learning about Sweden and other countries with us, 
Or you're from Sweden and you liked the facts, the information they gave, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. Um, this was, like I said, I keep saying it, it was fun. I'm smiling because I really did enjoy it. And we hope to meet a lot of you guys on our Facebook page so we can talk to you, get to know you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't really else, what else it's, to say. It's so much better to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. And hopefully you'll join us on Facebook. Absolutely. We'll be back next week, like I said, with more Swedish stuff. Hopefully the snack episode is what we're trying to do next week. And um, tomorrow, again, tune in if you want to see live on YouTube. Again, it's I, I can, bad with my, my time zones here. 8 a.m. UK time. Mm -hmm. Debbie and I will be going live to renew our vows of being together for 20 years. And we do hope that you will join us. We do. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Until then, please love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.